Madison Square Garden Boxing Incorporated presents the world's light heavyweight championship bout featuring champion Dick Tiger of the Republic of Biafra versus challenger Bob Foster of Washington D.C. 15 rounds from Madison Square Garden. Good evening. I'm Jim Gordon. This is Don Duffy and we're just moments before the light heavyweight championship fight. A fight in which the champion is not favored. It wouldn't be the first time that Dick Tiger's been in this position, Don. Well, he's got a lot of heart, Jim. Uh, he's giving away age, weight, reach, and height, and we'll talk more about that later on. But he's certainly not going to give away any height. As you can see, both the challenger and the champion are in the ring. In just a moment, we'll start some of the traditional introductions of other famous people in the world of boxing. Right now, Don Duffy and I will take a good hard look at uh, some of the background of both these fighters. First of all, Dick Tiger, of course, the champion from Biafra. He's uh, been through the mill many times. The, the question is now, what about the challenger, uh, Bob Foster? What are Foster's chances of dethroning Tiger tonight? Good, say the betting odds. Not so good, say the experts. But Foster has fine credentials. At 29, he's almost 10 years younger than Tiger. At 6'3 and a half, he's almost 8 inches taller. He's got the reach 79 to 71, and the weight 173 and a quarter to 168. And he scored 23 knockouts. Now here's Johnny Addy. From Hoboken, New Jersey, Frankie Cyclone Nelson. Let's give him a nice hand. 80 years old. Frankie is 80 years old, by the way, 80 right. years old. Please come up very quickly as I announce them. Former lightweight champ of the world, Ike Williams. One of the greatest featherweights, one of the great champions of them all, Willie Pep. King Classy Billy Graham. Ike Williams. Ike Williams on the Willie left. Pat. Willie Pat. Here is Billy Graham. Former middleweight king Jake LaMotta. The old Bronx Bull. Here comes Jake. Complete the with Bronx the turtleneck sweater Jake and the medallion, Bronx. too. Former lightweight champion of the world from Philadelphia, Bob Montgomery. Another former middleweight king, Joey Giadello. Here's Bob Montgomery. Bob's no longer a lightweight, as you can see. Both the weight champion of the world and moved into the middleweight division, the former middleweight king, Emil Griffith. Always a fine, popular performer, Emil Griffith. The current lightweight champion of the world, Carlos Ortiz. One of the finest, Carlos Ortiz. Here's Joey Giardello. Here's Giardello now walking across the ring. Here comes Emil Griffith, also a turtleneck, Jim. He was always one of the, the best sartorial experts King in the Rocky ring. Graziano. Oh, look at this Here one. Here comes Rocky. Back. If you're looking in color, former, it's baby former blue. Champion, Tony Sam. Man of Steel from Gary, Indiana. Tony Zale Here coming in. Real pro, Ortiz. Here's Ortiz. Former light heavyweight champion of the world, Tommy Lockwood. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the great champions of them all. This fall will be featured in his own Broadway show, Mr. Congressman. How about Sugar Ray Robinson? There's uh, Tony Zale. Tony Zale just got there. Here comes Sugar Ray Robinson. Wait till you see how he's dressed. 
Tommy Lockley. Speaking about being sartorially perfect, Sugar Jim. Ray. Jim, you used to call the races. What color is that? <laughs> Don, it's the first time I've never been able to describe a color. It's not quite shocking. Pink. Ladies and gentlemen, like this it's time, beautiful. former heavyweight champion of the world, the Manasseh Mala, Jack Dempsey. Now, Jim, it's like old timers uh, week here. We have Jack Dempsey, Sam Cobb's been around. Ed Sullivan is right behind us. Here comes the Manasseh Mala. Jack One Dempsey. of the greatest, Jack Dempsey. Always amazed when I see him, Don. He, is, he maintains a tremendous shape. Ladies and gentlemen, Joe Fraser will defend his World Heavyweight Championship for the first time here at the Garden. One month from tonight, June the 24th, Fraser will meet Manuel Ramos, the heavyweight champion of Mexico, who has knocked out 13 of his last 16 men. He has fought. This is a fight between two knockout specialists. So don't miss it. Tickets for the Fraser Ramos fight will go on sale tomorrow morning here at Madison Square Garden box office. I believe Manuel Ramos is here. And this is the from Mexico, the challenger, Emmanuel Ramos. This will be the next featured bout here, Manuel Ramos, and of course, Joe Fraser. I saw him beat Ernie Terrell. I didn't realize he was that big. Bob Foster will be coming in here with just about as much advantage as anybody has ever had in this particular division, mostly due to the fact that Tiger has never been anything more than an extremely heavy middleweight. He has come in here light tonight. Foster, while he's a tall man of 6'3 and a half, is actually uh, just about the right size for this particular weight division. Nevertheless, the man he's facing across the ring and the champion, and he will always fight like a champion, and they're going to have to take it away from him, only in championship form, is a man that can take good care of himself. All right, Johnny Addy is standing in the center of the ring as we look at Bob Foster, keeping warm, keeping loose. And here's Johnny Addy. Ladies and gentlemen, here are the ring officials assigned by the New York State Athletic Commission. The judges, Artie Idala and Tony Castellano. The timekeeper, Fred Avatello, County for the Knockdowns, Zach Clayton, and the referee for the main event, Mark Kahn. Fifteen rounds for the light heavyweight championship of the world. Introducing from Washington, D.C., he's wearing red trunks, he weighs 173 and a quarter, the challenger, Bob Foster. His opponent from Biafra, Larry Blue Trunks, he weighs 168, the light heavyweight king, Dick Tiger. Tiger gets a tremendous ovation. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have a special eight round bout, a return match to follow the main event. Now, this is the championship bout. Referee so Mark Kahn giving the instructions. I want you to keep both hands free at all times when you're punching. Do not hold with one hand and hit with the other. Is that clear? When I see you locked in a clinch, I'm going to tell you to break. I want both of you to stop punching immediately. Each take a step back without punching. Be careful of fouls, low blows, rabbit blows, kidney punches may cost you the bout. Now, you're both good, clean boxers, and I expect a clean bout. Shake hands now and good luck. They've completed the instructions to both fighters. The champion, Dick Tiger, weighing in at 168, one quarter of a pound under his weight for Roger Rouse. The challenger at 173 and a quarter, Bob Foster. And for the blow-by-blow, -blow, Don Duffy. Thank you, Jim Gordon. Again, good evening, everyone. The scoring here in New York on a round basis. There's the bell for round one. On a round basis, the scoring and the supplementary point system is used if the cards come out even. They're wearing eight-ounce gloves. The mandatory eight count is in effect. If a man is thrown a floored three times in a round, he is considered knocked out. And if a man is floored at or near the bell, the count will continue until he rises or is counted out. 
Now you can see the tremendous height advantage that Bob Foster has, but a very slim waistline. He's got eight inches in reach on Tiger. Tiger must uh, move to the body to uh, take that guard down. Foster has a good jolting left hand, a sharp jab. Tiger, you've seen him many times. Moves straight ahead, lets the other fellow do the moving. Just moves around in a circle as a rule. Foster has two alternatives. He can try for a quick knockout. He's capable of it. If he does that, he gambles that uh, he might not be able to go the limit himself. He's never gone 15 rounds. Tiger has done it seven times. Foster's longest distance is 12 rounds, and he only did that once. Or Foster could try to uh, win the bout on a decision by moving. Tiger has also always been bothered by the mental move like Emil Griffith and Joey Archer. Tiger has tremendous heart. His legs may be old, his heart is young. As figured, Foster keeps moving in behind that jab. Tiger is practically dwarfed under the bigger man, especially when he crouches. Tiger is uh, good with either hand, the left hook, the clubbing right to the body or to the head. Foster's best is his jab on his left hook. One minute to go in the round as Tiger finds his taller opponent. When Foster opens up, he'll do it with combinations. Tiger's good counter punch there. Seconds left in this round. There's the bell. Round two of this light heavyweight championship bout. Bob Foster, much the taller of the two from Washington, D.C. Dick Tiger, a lieutenant in the Biafran Army, defending his light heavyweight title. Referee is Mark Kahn. It's hard to visualize a man fighting another man who was eight inches taller, but Tiger did a good job in round one. I wondered if Tiger could punch up. He is doing it very well. Now the question is, can Foster punch down? Two minutes left in round two. While he's using the jab Almost exclusively, he's using it sparingly. I'm talking about Bob Foster. Ordinarily, he pumps it in there like a piston, like Ernie Terrell. But he's got to watch out for Tiger's counters. Those jabs are barely getting in on the nose. No question that Tiger has led at the heart of punches. Both men are fighting flat-footed. 
Referee is up on his toes. Half a minute to go in this round. Ten seconds left in this round. Tiger putting on another surge. The biggest surprise thus far is the fact that Bob Foster is not moving around nearly as much as we figured he would. Tiger, as Don has pointed out to you, has always had difficulty against a moving target. Foster has so many technical advantages coming into this fight that you would think in spite of the, with, along with the height, along with the reach, along with the young years he also carried into this ring with him, that Foster would have done exactly what everybody planned on him doing, and that is moving around, becoming an even tougher target, picking his own shots and making Tiger, making Tiger fight a defensive fight. Instead, Tiger has just been waiting. He has spotted the openings, probably didn't throw a punch in the first minute and a half of the first round, and then seemed to have solved Foster's style. Of course, it's very early. But so far, Foster has not moved around nearly as much as we thought he would. Nick Tiger has found him a sitting target. He's been able to connect. Round three at the New Madison Square Garden. Bob Foster making a mistake, the experts here think, in crouching and giving Tiger a shot at his chin. That's about the first time that Foster has thrown the right hand tonight. A good, uh, solid right hand and a hook. Both good by Bob Foster. Tiger is usually a slow starter, but he's gotten off quickly in this fight. Foster scored that left hook while he was slipping. Two minutes left in this round. And now Foster seems to be coming on behind that jab. The jab is bothering Tiger. And Tiger is falling for head feints. Both boys are perspiring freely under the hot ring lights. Tiger always dangerous. A minute left in this round. The ring must be very slippery. Foster looked as though he were ice skating a moment ago. And now Foster is using the one-two and getting away with it. He's sliding all over the place though. Foster has the reach 79 inches to 71, and he's making use of it now. Ten seconds left in this round. There's the bell. Round four at the New Madison Square Garden. Light heavyweight championship bout, Dick Tiger on the left, Bob Foster, the much the taller of the two, the referee, Mark Kahn. Tiger took the first two rounds and then Foster started to come on. Foster's long reach, long height, sharp jolting jab are making him a tough customer now. 
He's hitting harder with the jab. And he is still slipping. They scrape the shoes of Foster between rounds. Let's see if it keeps him floating. Now that jab is starting to work on Tiger. There is this possibility. Tiger fighting a man almost eight inches taller. Could very well hit below the belt unintentionally and cost himself. No sweat that time. About half the round is gone. Both men are perspiring so freely, they're making the ring circus, uh, the ring surface very wet, and consequently both are starting to slip now. I think Tiger hurt Foster, but he certainly bothered him that time. A minute to go in the round. How can you miss a punch over Foster's head? Yeah. 